traditional Chinese medicine has changed very little over the centuries. Its understanding of how the body works, its definition of disease, its view of diagnosis and treatment are essentially the same as those first laid down by ancient practitioners over 5,000 years ago. Western medicine sees the human body as a machine. The heart is the pump, the lungs are the bellows, the intestines the plumbing. Chinese medicine sees the body as a garden, a human landscape that must be gently tended and protected from extreme weather conditions from the outside and in. Chinese believe that you know, our body is constantly influenced by exterior forces such as wind, such as coal, such as uh, pollen, such as you know, uh, any exterior influence. And that can cause our body imbalance. And internally, our own body also, because of our emotional factors such as anger, such as jealousy, such as sadness and all this, can also cause our internal body imbalance. In traditional Chinese medicine, qi is the vital energy which flows like a river through the body, driving every cell, nourishing us, supporting us against disease. Qi circulates through the meridians, invisible channels that form a network throughout the body. On these each and every meridians, they have acupuncture points on those, and these are the points which is exchange energy flow from outside to inside, from inside to the outside. There are 12 main meridians, each related to and named after an organ or function of the body, such as the lung, spleen, or gallbladder. When qi flows freely, the body is balanced and healthy. Because of blockage of meridian, energy is unable to move according to the way that it should be and causing the back loss of all, all these traffic, just like we have a traffic jam. Like Once the qi flows smoothly, and then all the traffic becomes moves, moves, no? in orders, so there's no swelling left. Harmony is also the foundation of yin and yang, two forces that affect everything in the universe. They are opposites that can't exist without the other. As this Tai Chi symbol reveals, there is always a little yin and yang and a little yang and yin. Try to say that one quickly. The Chinese believe that all disease and disorders are caused by an imbalance of qi which occurs when there's too much yin or yang and not enough of the other. In Chinese medicine, diagnosis attempts to discover the condition of the patient's qi, how much out of balance it is, and why. Treatment seeks to return the body to that balance so qi can flow smoothly. The way that we receive patients are uh, different than what I'm experiencing Western medical doctor will do with their patients here because first we spend much longer time with each patient. We observe a patient's uh, physical appearance and all the body signs and uh, observe the way they talk and smell their body odor. Then we will ask a lot of questions. Conventional medicine is more focused on your major disorder and uh, the suppress the symptom in order to get a uh, person feel better actually. Sometimes you suppress the symptom, you not necessarily clear the whole body. So traditional Chinese medicine is more focused on your healing, help your body repair, regeneration power to do the work. Acupuncture is the most familiar method of treatment, one that is growing in popularity even with conventional practitioners who use it to complement Western medicine. But it's not the only form of treatment. Chinese medicine is a sophisticated and complex system of health care that also includes massage, herbalism, dietary therapy, concentration, and movement exercises such as qi gong and tai chi, as well as acupressure and cupping. Acupressure replaces the needle with a set of tools always close at hand, the human fingers. Applying pressure to the body's acupoints stimulates the flow of energy much the same way a needle does, and you can do it yourself. Therapeutic cupping is as old as civilization itself. It involves directing energy to the body by suction. Traditionally, the air inside the glass jar or cup is warmed, the jar turned over, and applied to the patient's upper and middle back. The heat creates a vacuum which draws up the underlying tissue, attaching the cup to the skin. 
they will relieve some internal uh, cold or damp or poor circulation or toxicity in your body. While it may seem archaic, cupping is still used in the treatment of a variety of ailments, from arthritis and asthma to bronchitis and lower back pain. You can buy therapeutic cupping sets, but they should be applied by someone properly trained, such as a medical acupuncturist. As with all alternative therapies, traditional Chinese medicine is best used as part of a complete holistic program, one that includes lifestyle choices that will bring us back into balance and allow our qi to flow freely once more. Nature in full bloom. It's part of the ever-changing cycle of life, one season giving way to another. For some of us, though, it means runny noses, rashes, and sneezing, all symptoms of allergies. An allergy is a reaction to something your body doesn't like. When a harmful bacteria or virus enters the respiratory system, the immune system goes into action, sending out protective proteins called antibodies that attach to the outer surface of the intruder and try to destroy it. But immune systems can make mistakes. Sometimes they attack perfectly harmless substances such as pollen, dust, and certain foods or drugs. The itching, swelling, or runny nose that follow are healthy reactions designed to rid the body of germs. Unfortunately, in this case, there are no germs. While many allergies are not much more than annoying, an allergic reaction can lead to asthma, a serious chronic disease of the respiratory system that causes airways to tighten and narrow, resulting in wheezing, a dry cough, and difficulty breathing. Asthma is a very severe condition, and often you see it in children as well as in adults. And with asthma, what we look for the allergens that are causing the asthma. Asthma is, in fact, the single leading cause of chronic illness in North American children. And the allergens that cause asthma can be anything from dust and pollen to industrial chemicals and car exhaust, even perfume. Food is also a culprit particularly when treated with sulfites used to retard spoilage and enhance appearance in frozen, canned, or dried vegetables and fruits. Traditional treatment for allergies and asthma include inhaled medication and anti-inflammatory drugs. Some medications can become ineffective if used too often. They treat the symptoms but do nothing to strengthen the body's resistance to the disease. Any food can provoke an allergic reaction, even the foods we eat every day, such as milk, whole wheat bread, and even citrus fruits. Foods are something we must look at with respect to any allergy and any asthma. At least 80% of asthma is allergic asthma, so they go hand in hand. When I minimize my exposure to wheat and glutens, my seasonal allergies can clear completely, my inhalant allergies. It modifies how reactive my body is to inhalant stimulants. Eating a high proportion of raw fruits and vegetables gives the body the enzymes needed to digest food completely and eliminate toxins that cause allergic reactions. Additives in processed food contribute to toxic buildup in the body. Allergy sufferers should also make sure they add cold water fish such as salmon, mackerel and sardines to their diet, as well as flaxseed oil supplements. When we lack important nutrients in our diet, Cell walls become more unstable, making the body more vulnerable to allergies. We can help remedy that deficiency with supplements. Vitamin C is a very powerful um, uh, counter to excessive histamine levels, and histamine is the hormone that's released or the chemical that's released that initiates allergic responses. So vitamin C plays a role. Vitamin B12 has been used in treating children with asthma. Vitamin B6 can be taken to reduce the number of attacks and their intensity. Vitamin A and vitamin E protect against pollutants and help strengthen the body's immune system. Certain mineral supplements are also helpful. After an asthma attack, drink as much water as you can as soon as you can. It will help loosen phlegm so you can cough out secretions. And drink fluids regularly throughout the day. Not only is it good for you, it helps prevent and reduce the intensity of asthma attacks. And while you're at it, take a deep breath and relax. Breathing exercises and stress control are vital to building stamina and fighting off infection and other illnesses naturally.
Connie Mitchell on Pins and Needles, next on Beyond Medicine.